logistical nightmare. More than 10% of the world's trade travels through Egypt's Suez Canal, which links Europe and Asia. But since Tuesday, it's been completely blocked after a huge cargo ship ran aground. While there's hope it could be freed sometime this weekend, CBS News correspondent Lucy Kraft, also Elizabeth Palmer, and Deborah Pata report from Tokyo, Tel Aviv, and Cape Town to explain how one vessel's mishap can affect all our lives. We begin with Lucy Kraft in Tokyo. Good morning. The Suez Canal shutdown has played havoc with a major trade route connecting east and west. Whether semiconductors and smartphones exported from southeast China, footwear and apparel made in India, automobiles from Asian factories and lithium-ion batteries for electric cars from Japan, all of these rely on the Suez Canal. It's also the preferred route for Asia's imports of crude oil and natural gas from the Mideast and Russia. About 19,000 vessels passed through the canal in 2019. That's an average of 50 ships each day. Behind me is the Mediterranean Sea. It's the normally busy northern gateway to the Suez Canal, but right now shipping is at a standstill. More than 200 vessels are waiting at both ends of the canal for the ever given to be cleared out of the way, but she remains stubbornly stuck. Salvage crews have been working round the clock at the moment, concentrating on digging tons of sand out from under the ship's bow and stern. The hope is that a high tide will eventually lift the ever given free. The United States has now offered to help the Egyptians free the Ever Given, but until that happens, ships traveling between Asia and the West will have to take the long way round the continent of Africa, 4,000 extra miles. The detour around the African Cape is lengthy, costly and potentially risky, adding up to two weeks to the journey. That's in addition to the hundreds of thousands of dollars in extra fuel costs. But as shipping companies contemplate how to bypass this increasingly expensive traffic jam, they also have to weigh up security concerns. Pirates have long preyed on ships in the waters of the Horn of Africa, but now the seas of oil-rich West Africa are also considered to be among the world's most perilous. In recent months, there's been a surge in kidnappings in the Gulf of Guinea. There's an environmental cost as well. Ships circumnavigating Africa will emit even more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. In this day and age, it seems so hard to believe that a ship like that can get stuck and that it's so difficult also to get it out. And the impact. Did you see the size of that puppy? Yeah, well, it's yeah. Huge. And you can't get it out with a tiny little backhoe. <laughs> I know. Right? It's like, come on. I, right. love, I love Liz Palmer's. She said, yeah, it's a David and Goliath <laughs> yeah. kind of situation there. That's exactly right.